All right. So today, guys, we are going to be talking about Upwork profiles. Welcome into the Morgan Overholt mix. It'd be helpful if I could actually get the name of the show, right? Um, I'm Morgan Overholt and she's the mix. Yeah, I'm Elena O'Neill. Um, so for the past five years or so now, I've kind of been behind the scenes uh, helping out Morgan with graphic design. We also launched our most recent travel blog together um, where we're partners on that venture. Um, but yeah, we've been uh, in this for a while and we're also happen to be sisters. Yep. Yeah. Little known fact. All right. So today, guys, we are going to be talking about Upwork profiles. And so what I'm going to try to do in, in these this video series is essentially talk about articles that are really popular on my blog. And if you've never been to my blog, you can check it out at morganoverholt.com and it's O-V-E-R-H-O-L-T-V -E -V as in Victor. Uh, and you can go on the blog and there's all sorts of free resources there for you to check out. But we kind of, you know, I think y'all get tired of hearing from me all the time, um, and like, I get it as somebody has earned about $500,000, actually over $500,000, almost $600,000 on Upwork at this point. Um, I am definitely, I've kind of become like Upwork B-list celebrity famous, <laughs> but I want you guys to hear it from somebody other than me every once in a while um, and actually pull other people into the conversation. And I thought, who better than my right-hand woman, Elena. So um, we'll kind of go through our articles, some of the more popular articles, and we'll just kind of like talk about our thoughts. And we'll, of course, we'll link the full article below if you want to actually read it for yourself. So um, today mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about um, Upwork profile examples and Upwork profile tips. All right. And again, the link is going to be in the description, um, which will either be below or beside, depending on um, how you're watching the video today. So um, like I said earlier, I joined Upwork in, uh, I've, I've made over $500,000 on Upwork. I joined Upwork in 2017 after rage quitting my job. Um, it's, <laughs> and I call it rage quit because I, I, I knew I wanted to quit, but I didn't really think it was going to be that soon. I just had all the fun I could possibly stand and decided I'm out here. <laughs> all of, all of the fun you could possibly stand. All the fun it could possibly stand. Um, I had no idea what Upwork was even was when I first started on Upwork. Um, it was literally my brother-in-law that told me I was not one of those Odesk people that, you know, has been on there forever. Um, my brother-in-law said, Hey, have you ever heard of this thing called Upwork? I'm pretty successful in the platform and you should check it out if you need money. And I was like, I like money. So, um, and then, you know, fast forward to today about what, five years uh, for five, almost six years later. And here we are. So, yeah, mm -hmm. but I, hopefully I can kind of teach you guys and we can sort of talk a little bit about, you know, like some of the stuff that's worked for me, maybe also some of the stuff that's not worked for me. <laughs> um, and then it also helps that Elena is also on Upwork right now. I am. So she, so she can weigh in too. I was thinking about today's topic though. And to be honest with you, I haven't really updated my actual profile and it's, it's been a minute if I'm being honest. Oh, well, good. Perfect. Well, then, <laughs> then we'll we this. could, we could maybe even use this as a case study of what you should update if it's outdated. <laughs> Perfect. Welcome to your intervention. <laughs> this is, this is really the long con. You're just like this, this needs work. <laughs> Okay. So number one, Elena, have you done this? Uh, the number one tip that I have is to fill your profile out completely and utilize keywords. It's one of those things, obviously that's much easier. Well, well, I feel like it's, it's one of those things that seems quite obvious, but not a lot of people do it. They skip on the portfolio or the employment history or the education, you know, whatever. Um, Elena, do you feel as though this is important? And is this something that you have done? I think so. Um, however, it's funny you mentioned keywords because we were just talking the other day about how we've learned so much more about keywords and how we, you know, used to think we knew what we were doing when it came to keywords and now we actually know what we're doing. But I imagine that's a lot different when you're filling something out, like doing a profile versus writing an actual blog post. Um, so do you have like a certain strategy when you're doing yours? Because I think if I were doing it tomorrow, I might look at it a little bit differently than I did when I set it up a couple of years ago. Okay. Right. So yeah, it's very much like SEO, like we were talking about before. Um, you know, so if for you bloggers and, and, um, you know, ad managers out there, you'll kind of know what that is, but for the rest of you, you've just got to think about what your client is looking for, right? Don't overthink it. Um, a lot of times I think us as freelancers, we think, oh, our clients know all the same industry terms that we do. Well, not necessarily. So like for me, my pro, 
profile, my profile, I make sure that I say I do graphic design. I design eBooks. I design magazines. I use just like the, the medium, you know, because some people just only understand what output they need. Mm -hmm. They don't understand the tool, but then on top mm -hmm. of that, I also make sure I'm saying, and I, I'm skilled in Adobe Photoshop and I'm skilled in Adobe InDesign. So I capture mm -hmm. those clients too, if they're looking for specific platforms, you know, I see that happen a lot. People trying to use these like industry buzz buzzy words that like nobody understands, you know? <laughs> so just try right. to kind of, I would try to live in both worlds. You can use your industry buzzy words, but also dumb it down and think, how would I describe this to like a friend or what, what mm -hmm. would my friend Google if they were looking for somebody that kind of did what I did? And, you know, just think about it that way, I guess. Yeah. I think a lot of clients would probably be looking for the end result versus they're not going to know if we use Photoshop or InDesign or you know, whatever. I, some of them do. Um, I think a lot of them probably wouldn't. What, what program do most people think we do graphic design in Elena? I think probably most people go to Photoshop. Wouldn't you say? No, I would say Microsoft word. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dang it. I should have said Microsoft word. <laughs> yeah. I feel like most of our that's, clients, are... that's what they want us to use. <laughs> Can you design this in an editable format? <laughs> hey, Hey, I need I would like this in an editable format, but I'm going to have you make the edits anyway, but I just, I just want to know that I can. Graphic design gripes. Anyway, <laughs> um, but we no, love, we love all of our clients. We uh, love all of our clients. We love you. We love you. So I'm trying to think about it in a way that if I were setting this up tomorrow versus how I set it up a couple of years ago, I know that Upwork came out with a few regulations and restrictions. Do you, I think you're more familiar with that. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So, um, and some of these, I think have been in place for a long time. Others might be new. Um, some of them we just didn't really know about, <laughs> you know, some of them they're only kind of more recently, I would say vocalizing and enforcing, um, full disclosure. I mean, it's always important to read a terms of service agreement when you sign up for anything. Right. But who among us is really doing that? So, um, so yeah, there are some limitations on what you can put on your Upwork profile. Like for instance, you're not supposed to list a website. Um, in fact, you're technically not supposed to list a website anywhere, even in your proposals, if, if it features a contact form or any way to contact you, like your email address, et cetera. Now, full disclosure, um, and if Upwork's listening, I mean, I don't know, slap my hand, but I didn't know that I've actually been including my, including my website on pretty much every proposal. <laughs> But, but I have never crossed my heart, hope to die, never taken a client off of Upwork prematurely. I mean, like, it's not something I do. I don't bite the hand that feeds. So I just, I just legitimately didn't know. But so if you want to link to an external portfolio website, you cannot do that on your profile. Just remember that you can do it in your proposals. And we'll make another video that kind of goes in more in depth on what you should be doing on your proposals later. Um, but, and, and just keep in mind, like if you do make sure there's no other way to contact, you have like a separate landing page or something it's exclusively for Upwork. But, but I think that kind of also emphasizes how important it is to have a robust profile, right? Because you're not allowed to link to those external resources. So make sure mm -hmm. that you've got a ton of portfolio examples. Elena, one of the biggest things I see people do, and I don't know if you have seen people do this or are guilty yourself, is only having like two or three portfolio pieces on their whole profile. Yeah. I, I might actually be guilty. I mean, I think I have more than two. Don't, please don't like, you know, I, I'm afraid you're going to go critique my profile now. Um, we, we should put I'm, your profile up on the screen though. We should cut no, away no, no. to it. <laughs> we should. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think I have more than two, but the problem, yeah, but it is, it can feel kind of exhausting, you know, to set up a whole, you know, portfolio website and then it almost feels like you're doing it again through the Upwork platform. Um, but you know, it's just part of it, I suppose. Um, it's if you want to be successful on the platform, that's the work that you have to put in upfront. I think is I, I'm guessing is the answer that you would tell me. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, to me, um, it doesn't even really seem like I'm redoing it. I mean, sure. I reuse some of the same portfolio pieces. I have my website. So there's some repetitive work, but I pitch myself differently on Upwork than I pitch myself on my own website. If you're already on my website, you probably know who I am because you came to me by referral or something. And so I just need to pitch myself a little bit differently. I don't necessarily need to introduce myself or like prove mm -hmm. my credentials. It's more like, look, here's the stuff I do. Do you want it? Huh? <laughs> yes. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, so. and also I think, I think cutting to the chase, I think that's something that we've talked about when we 
look to hire someone else. Um, you know, someone who's on Upwork probably is busy or have, you know, they're probably a small business owner. You know, they, they want to know that you can do it. They want to know you can do it well. They want to figure that out quickly. Excellent segue, Elena. That brings us to point number two. That's All right, point so number two, Morgan. <laughs> point number two is create a client focused bio. Um, so Elena and I have personally experienced this because we sometimes hire people on Upwork as well, both freelancers and Upwork, but we also hire people on Upwork. And, you know, and, and the thing is that it's exactly what Elena just said. You know, we just want to find somebody who's like, I understand what you need. Here's what I can do. Here's when I can do it. And here's the price range. That's, that's, mm-hmm. that's all we want to know. I don't really yeah. care about like where you went to college. I don't care what your nope. favorite food is. Mm-hmm. I don't care what your favorite color is. I don't, I don't, I don't care about all this other stuff. I just want to know whether or not you're a tried and true expert that can get the job done on time on budget. And really your profile and your proposals, but today we're talking profiles, um, it's got to make that really clear, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. So for instance, um, you might want to add, you might be asking yourself, what is a client focused bio? So I say that your bio needs to be more about your client than about you. So if you're using like, I, 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 this, I am, I, this, I am too, too much and not talking about what you're going to be doing for your clients as much, then you're that you need to flip it on its head a little bit. So for instance, like the first couple lines of my bio read, I offer a premium service to my clients. I'm hyper responsive. I'm available to you Monday through Friday during normal business hours. And I will offer to you quality products with rapid turnarounds. See, that's, that's just, not, I want to nitpick that most of those sentences still begin with I true, but I, like I said, so, <laughs> but still so talk it's about- okay to have an I statement. If it follows up with a, you, I can do this for you. Yes. Or saying, or not even just have to be the exact you word, but saying, these are the things I'm going to do for you as my client. Basically, I'm not talking about myself and, and how great I am. I'm talking about what I'm going to do for you. Does that make better sense? Am I saying it? Thank you for calling. Yes. <laughs> you don't want it to be about what, you know, I did or where I got my certification or where I went to school or how many, you know, people have worked for it. Now, you know, you can like, sometimes you can kind of name drop a little bit if you have a a good clientele, which I think you've done as well. However, um, it's, it's more about just it's customer service really at the end of the day, it's more about, you know, making your client feel taken care of. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, like Elena said, name dropping is actually a very effective tool. You know, I've coached a lot of different Upwork freelancers who I told them to just, you know, most of us have either worked or like worked adjacent for a pretty recognizable name at some point in our career. Right. And if that is you, even if you were like the intern that went and fetched that company coffee, like I have a friend and Elena, you'll know who this is. And I talk about it, but he used to work for, or maybe you won't, but it was in England. <laughs> I think I can narrow it down. (laughs) And he worked on like the original Top Gear and um, he, I saw him pitch himself as somebody that works like for Top Gear for over and over and over again. I think he also worked on one of the 007 movies uh, way back, but I'm like pretty sure he was mostly a coffee runner, (laughs) like straight up. But you know what? He didn't fill in that detail. He's just like, yeah, I worked on, you know, some 007 movies. I've worked for Top Gear, you know, and, and I'm telling you, unless they press, like most people will not, I've never had anybody really press on that kind of stuff. I just say, yeah, I, I worked, you know, for, for these companies and that's a great way yeah. to get started. And, and then the more, the more that you do it, um, you know, the more that you'll have, you know, genuine stories to tell, right. You'll be like, no, I was the graphic designer for this company or I worked, you know, whatever, just, you know, mm-hmm. don't, I'm not, I'm not encouraging lying. I'm just saying, you know, you just name drop and people probably won't ask more questions. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, don't, don't fib, but you can say, oh, I was on the set here. I, I, you know, got experience here. I was an intern here. You know, I think it just, it grabs people's attention and that's really what you're trying to do. Um, one thing I was kind of thinking about last night, it's, you know, I was applying for rental houses, but, you know, I think in some ways it still kind of applies. And I think it's something we've done quite a bit is we, you know, think about like what everyone else is going to do. What do you think everyone else is going to talk about? And then, and try to like, do something a little different, try to like stand out because, 
on the client's end, they might get 20 different proposals. What are you going to do to make sure that like they remember you over someone else? And I think name dropping kind of helps do that a little bit. I have three different books on my, my nightstand at any given time. And I just, I just read bits and pieces of whatever I'm feeling like. So I never read a book like to completion without going between books. So sometimes I get confused, but (laughs) I'm pretty sure that the story was in this, um, the business of expertise. Um, and this is by David C. Baker. But I believe it was in this book that he tells a story about how, um, how to stand out in a job interview. Like he said that a trick, and I can't remember whether or not it was him or a friend that used, um, that was very, very competitive, whatever they were applying for. And, um, they, they made, they made the resume out on a piece of paper that was like a half inch bigger than everybody else's piece of paper. So basically when the, um, when the company was looking at resumes and he also made that half inch bright red. So when the company was looking at resumes, they'd have a stack of resumes, right? But then this one piece of paper was always kind of sticking out and it was bright red and they try to like stack it and they're like, <laughs> it was still stuck. and it's still like sticking out, you know? And, and it's funny because he said, you know, that a person, you know, get got a call and essentially, you know, said, man, your resume drove me crazy because it, it literally stuck out. Um, I think that sometimes we, we almost play by the rules too much, you know, and we think, oh, well, if it, you know, X, Y, and Z doesn't work for me, like in Elena's rental story, she has a a cat and that cat is the most well-behaved cat I've ever seen in my entire life. It barely even meows, it's declawed. I mean, it's just like super easy going short hair, which I, Um, I didn't declaw it for the cat people out there. I rescued her that way. (laughs) She, she was found as is, (laughs) but but people keep saying, you know, don't apply um, because if you have a cat and Elena has been applying anyway, as I told her to, because to me, I would just say, hey, look, my cat's less destructive than most dogs, most less destructive than most, you know, humans, <laughs> most children. Uh, so, you know, please consider me anyway. And by the way, I'll throw an extra $50, a hundred dollars a month. If you accept my application, you know, I just, and I kind of think that Upwork is the same way, right? not to get too off topic, but I also apply for jobs that way. And again, we'll talk about that more when we do the proposals video, but, um, I quite often apply for jobs where, um, especially in the beginning where people said, Oh, you have to have so many years experience on Upwork. I'm like, whatever. I'm the best person for the job. And I know it. And I would literally apply and say, Hey, you know, I know I don't have the years of experience on Upwork, but I do in the real world and here's my portfolio Mm -hmm. and I can do a great job for you. And you know what? They hired me. So um, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm just kind of throwing that out there. Think yeah. about what you can do to stand out. Yeah. And don't be, don't be afraid to reach just a little bit higher. If, if you, if you truly believe that it could still be a good fit, um, you know, maybe you don't meet it on paper, but you know, that you could still do it. You know, that you still have the experience, then don't be afraid to go for it. And under that same topic, guys, um, I also recommend keeping your bio really short and sweet. Like mine, for instance, is only 70 words long. I don't even need that button. You know, it says read more. I don't Mm -hmm. even need that button on mine. And I recommend keeping everything right there above the fold to use an old Mm -hmm. newspaper term because your clients are lazy and they will not click. So they got to (laughs) be impressed with you in those first 70 words. And that's the God honest truth. (laughs) What does above the fold mean, Morgan? So above the fold in newspaper, if I got my paper prop again. So in newspaper, most newspapers and kids back in the day, this is what we used to get our news on before we had phones. <laughs> they printed out on a piece of paper and what? it would come to you. I know. And it would usually come to you folded in halves or thirds. Um, so this is the way you would see it, or is also the way that you would sell it like in a newspaper stand. And you want to make sure that your biggest selling point is right here above mm-hmm. the fold, because this has got to sell the paper, right? So if you've got your details down here, this doesn't, this isn't selling space. This is additional details, sell yes. everything right here. Right. So don't make your client click to read more. And that's where above the fold comes in. So yeah. it's an old, essentially newspaper selling technique. Yeah. And another just piece of newspaper writing is, is packing all the important stuff at the beginning. Um, yep. so same thing kind of for your profile. If you, if you want your client to read it, prospective client to read it, pack it up front, you know, exactly. earlier, the better. Okay. Which brings us to our next point. Um, create a title that differentiates you as an expert. So now we've kind of talked about what to do in the bio section, right? 
Um, and that's the little section like below your, your name, your title, the little bio with the read more. Now we're going to talk about what to do with the title. Okay. So the title is really oftentimes what kind of grabs people's attention and, and it's super important. And just like your bio, you also want to make sure that it's chock full of keywords. Um, I can actually provide a screenshot of this, or maybe we could like throw it into the final cut of this video. But um, for instance, I actually was trying to find my friend Josh the other day on Upwork, right? Um, I, Josh Burns, he's another super successful freelancer. He's got a YouTube channel um, that has like, I don't know, a billion people following him. You know, he's really great. Made $700,000 in Upwork. The guy really knows what he's doing. And um, and I, I couldn't go to pull up. In fact, this guy instead named Josh Tuper, who's only earned $2,000 on the platform versus, you know, my friend Josh, who's much more accredited, has a $700,000 earning. Um, this guy also at 83% job success score, I mean, okay. But again, 25 bucks an hour. I mean, he's just not, you know, why is he pulling up before my friend Josh Burns is right? Well, Elaine, it's because his title is Josh on a fork. He's got his name and then his title is Josh. Now, obviously, I think this guy didn't really understand the point of a title, <laughs> so, but to me, if, this, if you need a Josh, you hire him, right? He's the best Josh on the platform, clearly, but uh, it, to me, it's a really great demonstration because Upwork doesn't really say exactly what's in their search algorithm and exactly how they're using that. But to me, that tells me everything I need to know, right? The fact that like, when I look mm -hmm. for the term Josh, the guy that's using Josh as a title, instead of saying, oh, I'm a whatever, I'm a writer, I'm a developer, whatever, that he's pulling up, that tells me your title is insanely important as far as keywords mm -hmm. are concerned. So again, just like your bio, you want to make sure there are keywords in there. Um, and you also want to make sure that it's something that differentiates you as an expert, like with some kind of sales pitch, you know, does that make sense, Elena? Do you feel like you do that? What is your title in Upwork? Do you know? I would, I would have to look to be honest, but if we're using expe specific examples, say I'm a graphic designer and I love eBooks because I, I do. Um, and if that's the kind of jobs that I want to attract the most, would I put that in my title, like over graphic designer, would I put ebook designer slash graphic designer slash like, would I be that specific or would I just go graphic designer or does it depend? What would you, what would you recommend for me? Well, first of all, I would actually recommend making sure that you've got two different specialized profiles set up. Um, I recently saw a stat that, it, that having two specialized profiles set up increases your ability to get hired and your ability to pop up in the search algorithm exponentially. Um, so mm -hmm. make sure that you've got a specialized profile for the two favorite things that you really want to be targeting. But yes, Long answer short, I would include that in your title if that's the kind of job that you're really looking for. Because it's possible that that's what your client is searching for. And if you are one of only a handful of people that design eBooks, um, then make sure that's in your title. And again, yeah. make sure it says something, not just eBook designer, say expert eBook designer, something mm. like that. Or has designed, you know, for Amazon or ebook designer for Amazon or ebook designer for blogs, or you could do something like that and kind of even narrow that scope even further, you know, again, just think about mm -hmm. what your target audience might be looking for on Upwork. To give you some examples of titles that recently caught my eye, and I'll also include this as my, myself in this example. Um, my current title is expert graphic designer featured in business insider. Cause I'm also, um, after, after getting an opportunity to tell my story in business insider, I've recently become a contributor in business insider, but I've been featured in that, um, that publication many times now. And I think it's very impressive. So I include that in my title and people are like really impressed if, if they can go Google me on business insider, I must be a legit person allegedly. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, another one I am, I am no, <laughs> but another one that caught my eye was a guy named Tyler H and he had in his profile, or I'm sorry, his title king of SEO. And I just, I thought Ooh, that just oozed I like confidence. That. Yeah. It's he could, creative. He could probably put more keywords in the title, but I love how it oozed the confidence. Um, the king of SEO was missing some keywords, right? Exactly. <laughs> and then there maybe, maybe even one. better still would be as you know, king of SEO for blog writing or something like that. Maybe. Yep. Yep. I like that. I like that. Um, you want to be even in king of SEO, um, expert with SEM rush or something like that, you know, or some rush, like a, a really popular program. Again, it depends on whether or not you think your clients are like really know about SEO or would know about some rush. You got to know your clients. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in, the last example I was going to use was somebody called pansy F I think I'm pronouncing that correct. Forgive me if I'm not. Um, but that title was whiteboard and animated 2d 
3D explainer videos, expert 16 years experience. And I like how this person used the entire allotment of um, characters, which mm -hmm. are wizards just cut down to 70 characters or less, by the way, that is the limit. So they used every single one of those 70 characters. They have whiteboard in there. They have animated, they have the key 2d 3d explainer videos they have put that chock full of keywords and then they've also managed to squeeze in 16 years experience at the end which is also a really great selling point to me mm -hmm. as the client very nice very well done so. i if i had to guess without looking i think my title just says graphic designer and i don't think i have a specialized um profile, profile. so I'll, i might be using these tips later <laughs> Okay, great. Excellent. Well, like I said, welcome to your intervention. All right. Thank and you. then, then our last tip. Um, and then again, we'll really, really briefly kind of um, talk about where to find actual real life examples of some pretty kick ass freelancers um, and their profiles and how to, um, you know, apply those same techniques to yours. But our very last tip is curate a pro uh, curate a portfolio that effectively demonstrates your skills. Um, I always like to tell people, maybe this is just the artist in me, that people are visual, right? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, they, they, they don't like to read as much as they like to look at pretty, pretty pictures. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so honestly, um, and, and these stats are, are backed up, like the, one of the stats that I included in my article, um, according to a blog post on ink.com called 16 eye-popping statistics you need to know about visual content marketing. Um, posts that include, and this is talking about like social media posts, but it applies to Upwork as well. Uh, posts that include images produce a 650% higher engagement than text only posts. Mm -hmm. And that people are 85% more likely to buy a product after viewing a product video. Again, mm -hmm. people are super visual creatures. So I need y'all to make sure that your portfolios are robust. Now, mine personally features over 30 different items in my portfolio because I want to demonstrate that I can do everything from packaging to ebooks to slide decks to logos to just pretty much whatever, right? So I need to make sure that there are at least two or three different examples of every single service that I offer in there. So that when clients are looking for something specific, they could be like, all right, has this girl done something similar to what I, I the service I am looking for today? Um, so easy for us, right? But Elena, do you know what the question on every question people always ask me would be? What if you're Should not a graphic designer? Video? Oh, no. <laughs> Morgan, what if I'm not a graphic designer? <laughs> wow, Elena, so funny. You should ask. <laughs> I'm so visual of myself. I'm like, well, I don't have any questions. And <laughs> <laughs> it's like everybody's a designer, right? Everybody so on Upwork is a designer. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's all everybody does. So, but if so, if you're not a designer like us, um, then you can use that same section to kind of do a visual case study essentially. And so what I would do, um, if I were, let's say I was like, um, I don't know, trying to think of something I, I know enough to sort of talk about, but don't really know enough about <laughs> like, like if I were a database administrator, right. Um, what I would probably do is a database administrator and I would put together like, um, just an image with like the company logo that I worked for right at the top again, sort of a name drop situation. And then right under it, maybe just kind of bulleted out, you know, these are the tasks that I performed. And again, I know that we're kind of incorporating tasks, text into, you know, visuals, but again, as that logo is going to kind of catch their eye, um, then maybe even if, as long as it doesn't breach any kind of confiance digitality agreement, like screenshots of your software or a logos from the software that you use the most, any way to kind of visually represent what you're doing so that if the client is looking for a specific experience, then I think that'd be really, really eye-catching. Um, or let's say if you are, um, somebody who maybe impacted your company's bottom line or a client's bottom line, um, whether it be through social media engagement or sales, something like that. Like, let's say you're, you're an ad person. Maybe you could show those charts to show how many sales you've made for your client. Like here's where they were when I met them. And then here's what I've done for them, you know, after over six months time, include that maybe in your portfolio and clearly say, Hey, look, this is what I do for my clients. Social media engagement. You could do it the same way, have screenshots of like the Facebook page or the Instagram page that you made better along with a graph to show that increase in engagement. So anything that you can think of that will visually come, you know, draw that person's eye in, that's how I would use the portfolio section. Mm -hmm. I think that's really smart. I was just thinking, 
you know, my mind went to charts and things like that. So I'm glad you touched on that as well. Final, final tip is secure the client testimonials and reviews. Again, this is easier said than done. Obviously it's really hard to get your first review on that platform, but, um, like it took me, I always tell the story, but it took me two weeks to get like a $10 job, but you know, that $10 job resulted in a five-star review. And after that, it was so much easier to get clients after I had a single gushing review, um, about myself on that profile and a good tip for those who don't yet have reviews on their profile and this wasn't available back in my day, but you whippersnappers have it so much easier. No, I'm kidding. But you, but um, you could ask your existing clients offsite to offer you an Upwork testimonial. It's not a replacement for reviews, but I do think that it can be really helpful to have, you know, one or two testimonials from offsite clients on your Upwork profile. That way, at least somebody is vouching for you, you know? Mm-hmm. So Elena, do you, you want to expand on that at all? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just going to say one thing that you've touched on before is look at that very first job to get that very first review as a bit of a marketing expense. It, you know, the first one's the hardest, it'll probably get you some time. It may not be a very high paying gig, um, but you want to kind of look for something that you can knock out pretty quickly and then ask for what you want. So make sure you ask for that review. Mm -hmm. And then in the same article, and again, it's linked below or to the side, wherever you might find the description box on YouTube, I have provided three different profile examples um, in that article. If you want to take a look, I've included my own profile um, from actually, it's a little bit older because my rates a little bit low, a little bit higher now than the lower rate here in the screenshot. Um, but you can still see kind of how I have that set up. And then I also included my friend Josh's profile on here who has now earned over $700,000 on Upwork. Um, and he is a SQL developer and, or SQL server DBA more specifically. Um, and they also have Danny Margulies who is a copywriter and he's earned over $200,000 on Upwork as well. And I've got links to all of their profiles. If you guys want to see actual live examples of how to do this from successful people, make sure to click on that link and go check those out. Well, if they want to follow you on social media. Thank you. Yeah. Also make sure to like, and subscribe. We're brand new to YouTube. So we're just going to figure this out as we go along um, and try to get better (laughs) and uh, make sure that you follow me on social media. It's at Morgan, uh, Morgan O media. And that's on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Morgan O media. Um, So look me up. You can also just Google me. It's morganoverholt.com. I've got all the social links there too. So thank you guys so much for, for checking, for joining us and checking out our brand new YouTube channel. I, I, sorry, it's a little rough. Like I said, we're learning, but you know, you got to get started somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to hold that in, but I couldn't take it anymore.